Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back, my single solitary viewer. This is NHL 20 Franchise Mode. We have the Quebec City Double Butts. And they're still in the thick of things right now, fifth in the, their conference. But uh, in terms of points for all these teams, it's a very close race. And we got John Gibson back. So we got our main number one goaltender back in front of the net. And we should be able to start winning a little more, maybe. And we also just obtained Alexander Venberg, who had very, very few points. He was playing on the fourth line in Columbus, and now he's already got a few games under his belt and a few more points with uh, the Quebec City Assassins, and his, uh, you know, his stats are improving. There's still a long way to go, though. If we want to transform this player uh, from a bust into an actual elite player, or at least a strong top six player, is what I kind of, I'm hoping for a strong top six player, because then that's better than what I traded for what for him. And uh, Ottawa, meanwhile, is putting Mike Riley on the uh, waivers, which means I can claim him. Now, the coach, the scouts say this guy would really be the kind of defenseman the coach would like in, ter in terms of, like, um, f fitting in. So I decide, you know what, I'll, I'll claim him because there's a lack of chemistry with the defense in the farm team. And he's going to be an option in terms of uh, call-ups, in terms of injuries. Now, in terms of uh, the morale, and I'm, I'm stunned to discover Samuel Blais is actually one of the leaders of the team with Forbort. Shiri Anderson and Pietrangelo are strong locker room presences. Uh, but otherwise, everyone's fairly happy to be playing on the team right now, except the guys who have very little ice time, like Richard Panic. Um, I gotta try and keep Gurianov a little happy and try to put a smile on Alex Vanberg's face because, yeah, he was playing on the fourth line in uh, Columbus. He was not happy there. He's a uh, very, he's got a sourpuss and now I, I'm placing him on the first line in Quebec. He should uh, turn his frown upside down over the course of the season and hopefully we get a lot of points out of him. But uh, now we're facing... We were, we, were, we were losing to the Islanders, but now Valerie Dechuskin just changed that around with a powerful slap shot. He's scoring a lot of goals this season, which I did not expect him to be able to do. His role really is, he's normally Dechuskin is basically a third liner. He is one of those utility players, but the chemistry is such that almost no matter who I put on the second line, so long as he's on the second line, the chemistry is going to be great. And here's a big goal for Anderson to take the lead. This is the typical cross crease pass, the Fuzmaker special from Shiri to Anderson. Or was that from Martindale back there? No, that's Shiri. Um, and uh, Quebec City takes the lead. And at this point, Alex Venberg, empty netter. Uh, everyone's happy for him. He's got an empty net goal. <laughs> but uh, no, it's important in terms of uh, trying to to get his morale boosted. I'm not sure how it affects player development, but I figure, you know, odds are better that your player will develop nicely if uh, he's got ice time and he's not, he's not in slumps and his morale is high. A complete massacre occurs when uh, the Assassins beat the Ducks 7-zip. That included, I think, hat tricks by Sprong and uh, Martindale. Just a disaster, but unfortunately, two injuries. Uh, Jordan Schmaltz on the blue line of the pro team and uh, Joseph on the blue line of the farm team. So it's a good thing I claimed Mike Riley because he's going to come in handy to fill in the, you know, fill in the lines in the in the farm team here. But we're going to be promoting Xavier Ouellet to the pro team because I don't know like what is actual, like Mike Riley's what's his actual level at the moment. So we're going with a guy we know, Xavier Ouellet, and he's going to be uh, playing on the third pair. But unfortunately, look at that terrible chemistry, minus three overall. These guys do not play well together. In fact, looks like Xavier Ouellet does not play very well with anybody. The chemistry last year for the third pair was not good, that's why I signed guys like Forbort and Schmaltz, because Xavier Ouellet was just not doing it. And he's still not doing it, really, so 
uh, once the injury is over, I am putting this guy on the trading block with Paul Byron that nobody wants. And maybe I'll get an offer, uh, or maybe I'll trade him later on. But the chemistry just does not work. And uh, I think with Mike Riley and Joseph, I have other options. And now we face the Kings, and the Kings in the third period take the lead. They're leading 4 3. We gotta change this. But a big save! We're on the power play. We're trying to get that puck to the net. And then it takes that big Alex Pietrangelo slap shot that Martindale can deflect in front of the net, giving no chance to Jonathan Quick. And uh, we tie the game up. It's a good thing that uh, when uh, I intervene, I can uh, set the, a sinking ship. I can set it afloat again. Here comes Wenberg. Wenberg with the patience. Pass in front. And Martindale sinks it in. Another goal. His second of the game. There's no time to get a hat trick, though, because that was 20 seconds before the end of the game depriving Los Angeles of uh, a point for just going to overtime. Nope, they get none of that. You just get a fat L. You're welcome. Now, uh, it's time for Xavier Ouellette to return to the bench uh, because he'll be replaced by Jordan Schmaltz, who is healthy again. Quebec City keeps on battling those West Coast teams this time. It's the Vegas Golden Knights. We're heading into the third period with a 2-2 tie, and uh, let's hope that Quebec City can change that around. It's an intercepted pass by uh, Josh Anderson. They send it to Wens Wenberg with a big slap shot, and he gets, uh, what is this, his 10th of the season? Am I right? I am correct. 10th of the season, and uh, almost all of these 10 goals have been scored in the last roughly 10 games or, or so uh, since he's joined the team. So things are going pretty good for Alex Wenberg. Big slap shot from the point. The defenseman here loses his stick, so he doesn't have a stick. Here comes Gurianov. Pass in front to Nichushkin. The defenseman didn't have a stick to intercept this path with, so... We get a goal. Cross crease, Fuzmecker special. But the defenseman, usually they'd have a chance of intercepting. You see number three, no stick. So no chance. But speaking of no chance, that, uh, oof, that slap shot, one-timer by Alex Chiasson from, uh, from Took, that, that was no chance there for Gibson. So Vegas is still in this game. Still in this game. But, unfortunately, they couldn't score another. And as the last minute trickles down, we give an empty netter to Kruger, and then an empty netter to Denis Gurianov. I tried to uh, give empty netters to my uh, third and fourth line uh, when in those situations, if I can, so their morale isn't too low. A little bit of housekeeping with contract management. There aren't a lot of players to re-sign for next season, but one of them is Eric Conry. I don't have a young goaltender prospect that is uh, going to be coming up from the farm anytime soon. So, yeah, Eric Conry has been doing a good job. I can sign him at a reasonable salary for two years, and I think that's fair. He deserves it. So, let's let's give him the money he'd like. Or roughly, you know. Uh, let's say uh, a 10%. Actually, it's more like 7% reduction. But, um... He decides, you know what, that's good enough for me. I played a lot of minutes, mostly because John Gibson was uh, was injured, and he was one of the two number one goaltenders in the previous season. So he's under the impression he's going to be playing a lot of minutes in the next two years, which he's not. He's not. 1-1 is the score between the Quebec City Assassins and the Washington Capitals. And this is a evenly matched game. This should be a difficult one to win because the Capitals have very strong offense. They completely humiliated my D right there. And uh, Tom Wilson gets his 10th. Let's see what it looks like from the cheap sheets. Did you see anything? Neither did my goalie, apparently. Or me. Anyway, <laughs> here's Anderson. Cross crease to Martindale. 
And we've got a goal. We are back in this. It's 2 2. That's Martindale's 23rd of the season. That's a lot of goals. But if you thought that was a lot, well, Ovechkin's got 33, and the top 10 is 24, so Martindale's not even there. And shorthanded now, Martindale, top corner, and then he scores his 24th goal. He just cracks the top 10 goal scorers of the league. Congratulations, Captain Elijah Martindale. But yeah, um, it looks like we're not scoring quite as many goals as some of the other teams in the league. But we have a stellar defense with a really strong goalie and some really strong defensemen. So I, th I think we can do this. Well, the, you know, we, we scored out shorthanded. They still had the power play and I lost a corner battle. Setting up Lars Eller for his 12th. That went, yeah, I lost the corner battle. I never, almost never win corner battles. I'm re That's really my Achilles heel. But Blay gets a breakaway in OT. And we get the OT winner. That was beautiful. He managed to not be offside and just sneak behind the D and just fly off with that breakaway and uh, just threads the needle with the simplest deke I know from backside to front side and right over the pad. And uh, I gotta keep it simple because I'm a simple minded dude. This leads us straight into a game against the Arizona Coyotes who are doing really well this season. It's 1-1 in the third period. It's a grueling defensive game. Nobody seems to be able to score until number, number 23, who you haven't seen score very often. That's Jordan Schmaltz. And why haven't you never seen him score so often? Well, that's because... It's his first career goal. That's what everyone is uh, celebrating. They're very happy for the guy. Jordan Schmaltz, first career goal. It's a big slapper, not quite from the point. Uh, the top of the uh, face-off circle would be more accurate. And uh, perhaps a, uh, perhaps he'll get a couple more in his career. It's uh, not necessarily what you'd call an offensive defenseman. He doesn't really have the skill to be on the power play. So uh, that, that that goal is the is what he'll get, you know. Connor Sheary has been caught for tripping. Uh, basically, the ref was biased. And this BS happens. Now, Forbord touches the puck. And somehow, it just, it just goes into the net. Um... It's a bullshit goal, and uh, none of the replays shows it making any more sense. So uh, we're just going to go back to celebrating Jordan Schmaltz's first goal. <laughs> Connor Sheary tries to make up for the penalty he took. Sweet pass, and who you dish it to for a game-winning goal? That's right. That's it for the Coyotes. The somewhat kind of winning streak with for relatively rare losses keeps going. Um... It looks like the team is doing well against uh, teams in the other conference in general. So I won't complain because up next are the Colorado Avalanche. Again, a tied game in the third period. It's a battle to try and get a goal. But Big Joe's patient. He sends it over to Gurianov and he doesn't miss. Of course, that's the Flues Maker special. It's actually really hard to miss. That's why it works so well. And that's why I suppose I go for that move way too often. But, you know, at all-star difficulty, the computer doesn't give me another choice. Except that sweetness. Did you see that? Yeah, rewind the video and watch it again because the replay won't do it justice. That's Connor Sheary actually beating the other team to the corner of... Uh, to pick up the puck in the corner. Just swoops in front of the net. And, uh, well, basically embarrasses the goalie in that one. But you don't see that very often, but Connor Sheary is such a fast little skater that, uh, well, he actually pulled it off. Um, little bad pass there. S kind of intercepted, which was bad since, uh, you know, the Avs are on the power play. And they put it in. Nazem Kadri giving no chance whatsoever um, for... <laughs> Comrie, uh, there was there was a real chance. I can't blame Comrie on that one. Uh, that that's really my bad. But still, uh, the Avalanche does not have time to catch up with the empty netters and stuff. It's a five-three, and it's over. And then, well, 
an embarrassing uh, situation for St. Louis. They're getting their asses whooped 6-1. Uh, you know, things are looking... Everything's coming up assassins. Except now, while well, Connor Sheary is injured. And he'll be gone for a few weeks. Three weeks? Three weeks, roughly. And that's no bueno. Uh, because as we just saw, he's an important part of the offense. Not so long ago, he was uh, the actually top point getter for the team. Uh, but in terms of chemistry, Tyler DeFoley fits uh, rather well with uh, Nechuskin and Ble. So I think in terms of uh, second line chemistry, we're still going to be good, I hope. I mean, there's players uh, that I'm keeping right now that I'm not trading quite yet, even though they don't quite fit into the team that's Sprong and Gurianov. They have too much talent to be on the third line, but I'm not trading them yet because I want that depth heading into the playoffs. And maybe I'll trade them uh, at the draft to try and better my position. But yeah, that's the plan so far. We're keeping everything as is, and we head into overtime against the Blackhawks 1-1, another defensive game. Now, again, the Assassins don't score a lot of goals. They actually just allow relatively few most of the time. Look at that patience. And then when you need that overtime game-winning goal, who do you get? Can you answer that one? Sure, mix a lot can. You get just the best way to close out a game with another OT win. Mmm, gotta love it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. All right, still, we're, we're, the weeks go on, the days go on. We're getting closer and closer to the trade deadline. And of course, along the way, we embarrass one of the weakest teams of the league. The Buffalo Sabres are desperately trying to get the top pick overall. And uh, we're helping them along. And Martindale and Sprong, yep, Sprong again, two goals each. And it's a big win. Um, but the trade deadline is upon us. I looked... Uh, through everything that was uh, available on the block and I could not find any possibilities that would be helpful to me given what I'm willing to give as well because there were a couple elite players on there but uh, to get an elite player you have to give a lot so I'm just uh, offering Xavier Wallet for trade to whoever would be interested and eight teams are giving me little offers and essentially all of them are giving me two picks including a third rounder and in my opinion given my skills at the drafts in general I think I can definitely convert at least one of those two picks into a player that would be quite useful to the team in the future uh, ultimately I end up choosing Arizona's offer uh, but uh, you know, vision being 2020, I can already tell you I should have chosen the Nashville Predators' as offer. Uh, it would be a little bit juicier than the Coyotes. The Coyotes are actually doing really well, and I was not necessarily ex expecting that. But I usually know that the aging Predators tend to go on a bit of a downward spiral, so I should have taken them. I should have known better. Time to give contracts to some of the, my ut utility players and depth players from the farm team that I might be welcoming back next season, notably Kruger. And then I will close out this episode with a big conflict, the war against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Of course, we just got Venberg from them at the beginning of the season, where after a match they had won. But now Cam Fowler, do you see that goal? That was just a beautiful play on the power play. Cam Fowler just uh, picking up where Alexander Venberg left things off. Picks up the puck, brings it to the corner, passes it to Anderson. Back in front to Cam Fowler, and this one is in. No chance for Korspikowski, I believe, in front of the net. But unfortunately, Derek Brassard, who we traded for Venberg, comes up with the answer. It's his 21st goal of the season. He's been lighting it up. And 20 for 21 goals is already way more goals than he had for us the entire last season when he was on our first line. I don't know what he's been eating. He's been eating vitamins. Just like Cam Atkinson. It's almost the same play, except Atkinson does it on the backhand. 
but yeah, these this is not going well for the double butts. What's going on? We've had an episode full of win. What is this? Ah, but don't worry, Sprong is here. And he shoots it in when you need to close that gap. Who do you call? And uh, like that, this quickly, we're back in this game. It's a solo effort, basically, by Sprong. It basically beats the goalie one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, to Foley intercepts to Manson. Manson to Dechuskin in front to Toffoli. And we tie this game up with less than a minute to do in the period. I actually legitimately thought I was going to be losing against the Blue Jackets. And I feel you know, it was a point of pride to not lose, at least not lose in regular time, because of that trade we did in the season. When you win, you want to have that feeling that you won the trade. In any case, here we are in overtime. Martindale is the man of the situation. Or actually, Josh Anderson is. He was parked in front of the net and just... Yeah, he, he batted that one in, no mistake here. A perfect goal, perfect setup. 4-3, end of the game, yet another win for the Quebec City double butts. And yet, we're not even on top of the league. The Maple Leafs, who are we're facing next, next episode, are actually on top of the league. Uh, but today is basically trade deadline day, for reals. And I'm not really actually right now thinking about obtaining someone, but I'm going over to the free agency because there's one guy on the farm team I want to replace with a player that is uh, higher skilled because the farm team is struggling a little bit to make the playoffs. They're in contention, but they need a slight boost, uh, especially since I, I took uh, Xavier Willette out of there. And I'm looking for a center of experience. I'm thinking Riley Sheehan is probably the man. I have. I'm not sure what his uh, actual overall is, but if I recall, he's a he's a solid like two-way utilitarian player at a at minimum pay. That's fine with me. So uh, he'll tell us uh, in a few days his decision, and we'll see how, what it is in a few days. Sponsored by the Flues Crew on Patreon.